Ambal is keep is fond of working and I'm fond of traveling. <laughs> Ambal is just wasting his life in working, working, and working only. And on traveling and traveling. With all your blessings. Someone, <laughs> someone needs to work, sir. Yeah. Uh, so Great. you have to balance both work and travel. Great work. He is a uh, he. I must say he is he is the real backbone of geriatric society of India, especially all our academic activities. And uh, recently he organized a wonderful program in which all our geriatricians from across the country joined, and uh, we had the privilege of honoring twelve such organizations which were working in the field of geriatrics. Brilliant, brilliant. That he delivered a wonderful guest lecture on elder abuse. Elder. That was a great program. Yeah, yeah. There was a report done by Help Age India on the elder abuse in 2019. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. That also had a great media coverage and everything. Anand, one good news. Uh, Anand, can I say? Anand, you have muted yourself. No, sir. I. Uh, system. Uh, you can talk, sir. Sharma, sir. Uh, Anand. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Uh, this year we have IPF. Hey, the entry. This year we have IPF conference on Hello? <laughs> Hello? Mute me. Okay, sir. Uh, shall we start? Okay, okay. Please do that. Yes, sir. Yeah. You don't have to do mic me. Good afternoon to one and all. Myself, Dr. Rutuja Pati, third year resident in the Department of General Medicine. As Mother Teresa said, the fruit of love is the service, which is compassion in action. This holds true for the caregiver across the generations. The best thing about being a caregiver is to discover a love you didn't know possible. 
caregiver are the backbone of a good health of seniors in our society the caregiver can be anyone like family member nurse or professional caregivers the role of caregiver is vital in the recovery of the patient maintaining the quality of life and dignity especially in elderly population and this program intend to sensitize us regarding the basics of caregiving and learning of caregiving it itself improves about selves others and improve the quality of life on the half of our uh, management and bld deemed to be university and shri bm patel medical college hospital and research center bijapura we cordially uh, welcome family uh, faculty members chairperson and all the participants to virtual and offline lecture which will explore the challenges and solutions of providing care to the senior citizens by dr anil patel sir i also welcome patrons dr mb patel honorable chancellor dr rs mudha vice chancellor dr j j ambedkar registrar dr arvin patel dean faculty of medicine dr anum si inamdar dean faculty of allied health sciences dr s v patel vice principal dr r m honutki vice president association of physicians of india karnataka chapter and medical superintendent dr a p amli vice president geriatric society of india and geriatric clinic dr rajkumar yargal dho bijapura i also invite dr sholman chopde who is the principal bld shri bm patel uh, uh, institute of Nurse, nursing sciences bijapura i request you sir to take your seat chodi sir now i invite dr sr badigar sir head of the department of general medicine to welcome the gathering I now invite Dr. Sneha Mukherjee to introduce our esteemed guest faculty, Dr. Anil Patel. It is a matter of privilege to introduce our guest faculty, Dr. Anil Patel. Sir has 25 years of experience in the international development sector as a veterinarian, development practitioner, grant maker, and trustee. He has extensive experience in delivering for the positive change for the public benefit in the fields of family caregiving, disability, community mental health, and development and farm animal welfare through both community-based interventions and policy-level work in developing countries. He has done a master course in international disability studies at the Center for International Child Health, Institute of Child Health. and university of uh, college U uh, london uk and a short course on culture and psychopathology in the university of bergen norway experiences in his pers uh, personal and professional life led him to establish the carers worldwide which is in 2012 and continue to fuel his passion to transform the lives of unpaid family carers which works across low and middle income countries to bring about the systemic changes for the family carers His experience also includes the role of grant making with the Wellcome Trust and the Tubney uh, Charitable Trust in the UK, where he facilitates uh, grants to value of about one uh, about a hundred million pounds. He is now the founder and executive director of Carer World Worldwide, which works across India, Nepal, and Bangladesh to bring about the systemic change for family carers and highlights. the issues uh, facing unpaid family carers in low and middle income countries is a group of largely unrecognized and unsupported it is the, the only international i ngo which exclusively and strategically uh, addresses the social the physiological the physical mental and economic well being of carers of chronically ill uh, elderly and disabled loved ones so far it has transformed the lives of more than 79000 carers and their family members He is the chair of the membership, recruitment, and the engagement committee of IACO, which is the International Alliance of Carer Organizations. The innovative nature of Anil Sir's work and its huge potential for social impact on a wide scale has resulted in him being awarded as the International Ashoka Fellow in 2015. 
making more um, health fellow in 2016, Cordes Fellowship in 2017, and being recognized as the ACBO, which is the Association of the Chief Executives of Voluntary Organizations as an inspirational and emerging leader in the third sector. His specific interest includes building an evidence base for the support for family carers in South Asia, looking at the new longevity and the elderly care burden and the economic uh, impacts of caring and increasing the, the visibility of carer globally and in order to influence the policy and the best practice to see worldwide and sustained changes in the lives of these care caregivers, to see their rights and enshrined in the national legislation on the global scale and carer movements at the heart of the civil society of each country. So I welcome you. Thank you, Dr. Sneha. I invite Dr. Victoria to share the details of geriatric clinic, which is conducting you in our hospital. Good afternoon. A uh, brief preview about the geriatric clinic in Sri BM Patil Medical College and Hospital. Geriatric clinic was started in the year 2007, which was the third in the Karnataka state then. It is serving senior citizens of this part of Karnataka in holistic manner. For the last 13 years without a break in Sri BM Patil Medical College and Hospital. It functions in the OPD number no. 5, ground floor, every Wednesday between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. It caters to the health and social needs of other older people. It has overcome, it has over 1,000 registered patients so far. It is engaged in health, academic awareness, and prevention services for overall benefit of senior citizens. It has all the specialists under one roof and one floor for the benefit of senior citizens. It has 16 scientific research papers presented at international, national, and state level conferences of Geriatric Society of India, Association of Physicians of India, and Indian Medical Association. It has representation in committee for recommendations of immunization for older people of India of, to government of India. It is a part of regular training of newly recruited government medical officers on geriatric medicine as a part of national program of healthcare elderly at district and national level. It has designed a questionnaire to detect uh, elderly abuse for clinicians. It has uh, 76 representations as a resource person so far at various platforms, including state, national, and international conferences, and has 75 publications in various books, journals, and magazines, and five orations to its credit. Has contributed 13 chapters in various books on geriatric medicine and gerontology. It has also published one book titled Current Issues in Geriatrics 4, in 2016 and co-edited the book title Management Issues in Geriatric in 2019. It has started Dementia Clinic in the year 2014 in collaboration with Department of Psychiatry with assistance of Dr. Chokimath and Immunization Clinic in the year 2019. So far, three research papers have been presented at annual conferences of British Society of Gerontology in Scotland, Wales, and in Sweden, respectively. It provides healthcare and preventive services to a village called Arjunagi every month, fourth Sunday. It has hosted two straight conferences exclusively of geriatric medicine, gerontology, one CMA and three workshops on geriatric medicine. On social front, it has organized 16 awareness talks and 15 health check camps in rural and slum areas for senior citizens and has been observing all the international days of health importance like elderly abuse, awareness day, International Day for Older Persons, Alzheimer's Day, and immunization camps for senior citizens. It has also organized workshop on elder abuse for po police personnel. It conducts Meet the Caregivers program at regular intervals. It is one among three medical colleges in Karnataka which teaches geriatric medicine to MBBS students and only medical college which teaches geriatric medicine to the postgraduate MD students, which is a basic learning course. It is library for senior citizens in the general ward. The clinic encourages and assists body donation and eye donation for senior citizens. The geriatric clinic uh, represents as advisory member for various citizens formed in Vijayapura district as health helpline, participate in all India radio talks on health issues regularly, and has been member of district forum of uh, maintenance of senior citizens law 2007. The research conducted by me and my team has created huge impact on senior citizens at community level and has also led to the formation of new measures of services for overall benefit of the senior citizens. Our research has been case and need based of the community 
identifying the core issues and also has met the unmet needs of the older people through the projects hence we at geriatric clinic are a part of solutions to the research activities conducted by undergraduate students have been published in index journal while one has won uh, award at national conference it has received 11 awards so far and one is from the government of karnataka title state award in the year 2016 thank you thank you dr victoria now i invite dr ap amli who is vice president uh, geriatric society of india and geriatric clinic to give a preamble for today's program a very good afternoon to all of all of you and the dignitaries uh, on online and uh, we have a team of nurses and post year students here on offline so uh, we are just uh, doing this program uh, to create a team of caregivers for the older people Uh, at our institute, uh, and we have uh, nursing staffs from government hospital and our institute, and few nursing staff from the private hospitals as well. So the basic aim, being that many clinicians are aware, are of opinion that we need caregivers for the older people, not only at the hospital but also at the home. So with due respect to the individuals or women. who are providing care for the older people in their home or in their respective home or uh, in the hospitals uh, considering their economical uh, and cultural conditions uh, they are doing their best what we should look for is the need based care for the older people rather than the protocol based care for the older people so in this uh, regard we are having a team of 25 nursing staff with us today Uh, who are participating in this program and thereafter they will be again trained through the cares worldwide and the national institute of social defense so through this uh, lecture uh, program i also request the clinicians to always high, have a high regards for the caregivers because it that success of the treatment depends upon the caregivers uh, and second the caregivers are already stressed upon they are burn out for various issues in the home they are taking care of multiple issues in the home so we as a clinician should also have a respect for the caregivers of the senior citizens so with this preamble uh, i uh, take this privilege to uh, invite dr anil patil uh, sir uh, for this program and uh, share his thoughts and bring the solutions for us in providing care for the older people thank you very much thank you so much uh, <clears throat> dr ambale for those warm words it's a really great privilege and honor to be joining you from uh, london sir, sir just a minute uh, uh, yeah. before you your uh, dr op sharma like to address the show sure. Uh, well, at the outset, I would like to thank the organizers for taking this wonderful opportunity to organize a guest lecture from Professor Anil Patel, uh, Dr. Chopre, uh, the principal of BLD and C B M Patel Institute of Nursing Sciences. Uh, the faculty of bld uh, the students of bed nursing students all those who are attending and my respected past president dr pravadikari on this occasion i would also like to extend a warm welcome to dr anil patel on behalf of geriatric society of india whose dr anand p ambali is an important pillar friends i am pushed back to my memory lane way back in 1999 when we brought out the first textbook in the country on geriatric medicine in my that book also i had two chapters on nursing one was the general nursing and other was uh, the specialized nursing later on of course we kept on adding the palliative care etc 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 so it's not only the medication it is the care that has a very vital role to play the care being given at various levels by people trained at various levels but the informal care is as important 
as the formal care is. And the, for the informal care, basically the members of family and friends are always involved. I really like Dr. Anand's this statement about uh, making a module and adopting the system that we give the need-based care rather than the protocol-based care. Protocols are being made and they are being followed blindly. But what is important is what the patient needs and what the patient is being provided as per the needs. I think in this era of need-based need -based care, the informal care will be very, very vital because it is going to take years before we create caregivers who are formally trained in the geriatric care across our country. But informal carers are plenty and they are doing their job day in, day out. I'm glad that this son of the soil, Dr. Anand Patil, a shining star in UK, is doing such a commendable job that we, we, we all feel very proud of him. Dr. Patil, we welcome you to this platform. We welcome you on behalf of Geriatric Society of also, and we look forward for a lecture from you, which will show us some direction which will encourage us about the informal care source. Thank you so much, Dr. Ambali. Thank you so much, uh, organizers. And thank you, Dr. Patel. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, now I request uh, Dr. Rajesh Honodge, sir, uh, Medical Superintendent of Sri BM Patel Medical College and Vice President of Association of Physicians of India, Karnataka, uh, uh, Karnataka chapter, to share his views. Uh, good afternoon, respected chairperson, respected uh, dignitaries online and offline. Uh, I'm very glad that uh, our geriatric clinic and uh, also vice president of Geriatric Society of India, Dr. Anand Ambli, has taken initiative uh, for organizing this program, which is very much needed for this decade. As this decade of uh, this uh, 2021 and 2030 is declared as decade of healthy aging by UN recently. So uh, as a part of our uh, social uh, uh, social <coughs> work and uh, as a part of our uh, geriatric clinic, we have taken this initiative to train the various nursing staff and doctors for helping the needy patients, especially geriatric patients. By adopting this, uh, the <coughs> approach regarding this uh, decade of health uh, or healthy aging, we'll be able to uh, initiate uh, all nations and give quality health care for the geriatric patients. Uh, the strategy will be prioritize the healthy aging and uh, resilience into and throughout the people of older years, enable the higher quality acute and, and uh, restorative care to effective rehabilitation, recovery and restoration after acute conditions and also ensure pattern the patients can live uh, and well with long-term goal. So that we'll be able to not only add years to life, but also life to years. Again, I thank Dr. Ambli and also on behalf of uh, Association of Physicians of India, Karnataka chapter, I thank uh, Dr. Ambli and the geriatric uh, department of uh, BLDS CBM Patil Medical College for inviting me for today's function. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I request Dr. Shalman Sopade, who is the principal BLD Shribiyam Patil Institute of Nursing Sciences, who is the chairperson for today's program to proceed with the proceedings. Over to you. Uh, very good afternoon to everyone who has gathered here for this today's lecture to online and offline mode. 
today's our topic for lecture is role of informal carers in the karnataka health care system at the outset i am very much i would like to immensely thank dr badigar sir and dr amli for the opportunity given to me to chair this today's wonderful session today it's my proud privilege and honor to introduce our today's guest dr anil patil who is a founder and executive director of carers worldwide from united kingdom over to you dr anil thank you thank you so much sir uh, it's a great privilege and honor to be asked to share the work of carers worldwide and particularly aging and uh, caring the relationship between the two and uh, i also take this opportunity to say huge thanks on behalf of carers worldwide and the carers with whom we have been working all over india uh, as well as uh, in nepal and bangladesh so today's session is going to cover two uh, topics one is journey of carers worldwide and caring what inspired me to set up this organization and what we have been doing to provide the support to family carers and how we are improving their health and well being and the second which is closer to all of you uh, very much interested is in long term care aging and impact of caring on carers so i'm going to cover the second part on aging and caring aspect so today it will be just a uh, orientation uh, introduction to the uh, topic particularly from the caregiver's uh, point of view and uh, so at the end i'm sure we'll have few minutes to take on some questions as uh, dr ambali has uh, mentioned that uh, this will be a beginning of a new journey and uh, i really appreciate for giving me this platform to share about the work of carer worldwide i'm going to share i have put together a few slides i'm going to share the slides with the, all of you as rightly highlighted that uh, this decade is going to be a decade of healthy aging so i'm going to just to take you through briefly about uh, caring and carers worldwide uh, as uh, sneha has mentioned in her introduction uh, that carers worldwide is the only organization exclusively and strategically not just raising the awareness about the needs of family carers in low and middle income countries but also working towards recognizing the vital role they have been playing in day in day out for the care for individuals so i want to share two experiences which have inspired me to set up a creation of a carer worldwide one is uh, my first experience is uh, working with people with mental illness in uh, rural karnataka um, i'm sure that uh, this kind of image you may have come across in uh, rural india this was in uh, uh, late 90s and early 2000 so i used to meet with many family members who have been caring for their loved one and they used to ask me 101 question why this happened to us what did we do was it a past karma or sin or someone has done a witchcraft as you can imagine whatever knowledge understanding i had i was able to respond to that question so this is the these are the question from the family members but the second question which had a huge impact on me and i didn't uh, do anything at that time 
the second question was from the carers who were asking, what happens if I die tomorrow? Who is going to look after my loved one? At that time, my focus was also primarily on person needing the care. In this uh, situation, person with mental illness who has been chained to the trees. Uh, many people have been locked in the room. So I was only focused on that individual, not about the carers who have been caring for their loved ones. Partly because carers look normal to me. They are getting on with life. And uh, although within themselves they were having, but it is it was all the difficulty challenges they were facing were invisible. Whereas person with mental illness, you can see physically, he or she needing the help in great difficulties, pain and suffering. So that was the first experience made me to think the issue of carers deeply. For that second question, what happens if I die tomorrow? Neither I answered that question, nor I facilitated carers or family members to come together to find an answer. I left as is because I didn't know what to do in such situation. And the second uh, experience is a personal experience. Again, uh, Sneha has mentioned in her introduction that uh, this uh, professional and personal experience has led me to establish carers worldwide. As you can see, uh, I have a beautiful family. Uh, Ruth and I have two you know, beautiful daughters. And when our second daughter was born, we discovered that she has Down syndrome. The kind of questions what carers in rural India were asking, same questions were going through our mind. In spite of having all this knowledge, all this background, traveled across the world, uh, studied and worked in the sector, still the same question, why us, what did we do kind of thing. Of course, she is a teenager now. She is very beautiful, uh, bright, clever and funny. It is privileged to have her. She is enriching our life. But friends, I would like to say, if there wasn't a support from professionals like all of you, or friends and families, I don't think we would have coped well. So our health and well-being has impacted significantly between Ruth and myself. We have to give up our career, uh, one of our career. And I went from full-time to part-time to uh, look after her. Initially, we had lots of challenges. In spite of living in the UK, having fantastic national health services, we had lots of challenges here. And it was not just impacting our health and well being and emotional well being, but also uh, social and economic well being as well. So, these two experiences have inspired me to ask a simple question. Imagine a country like India, where there are millions and millions of carers are caring for their loved one without any recognition, without any acknowledgement, without any appreciation of the wonderful role they are playing day in, day out. So this led me to embark on the journey of trying to understand the issues of carers and the issues of cared for individuals. What are the challenges they are facing? What are their needs? Are there any organization providing the support to caregivers? Is there any support from government? What is the approach people are using to address this? So that led me to spend a lot of time in uh, India as well as in South Africa, where I done an extensive study uh, research. And that led me to develop a model to provide the support to carers, which I will share briefly about. So who are carers? <clears throat> it's a very broad definition we use. It means any person of any age who cares or nurses a relative, friend or partner who requires help, whether it is physical health issues, mental health issues, disability, old age, substance misuse, or any other chronic illnesses. So this is a very, very broad definition we use. So why is it uh, so important uh, to 
understand and provide the support to carers. So here, recognizing the critical role they are playing, trying to understand their issues and challenges and how we can provide the support to them. So if you ask me, in my opinion, I truly believe carers are part of this triangle of care, what I call. One is a care receiver, person needing the care. Second is professionals like all of you, uh, nurses or uh, doctors and uh, specialized uh, professionals. And the third is family members who are the carers. Professionals were able to diagnose, understand the issues and challenges their uh, care for individual is going through. So during the consultation, we provide information, knowledge, and a skill transfer. But as Dr. Ambali has mentioned, it is the carers who are implementing that knowledge, skills, uh, and information you supply to uh, or provide to the carers. So they are the one spending 80 to 85% of the time with the care for individuals. So we as professionals, you can imagine how much time we give to the family members. Maybe if they are lucky, half an hour or one hour. During that time, we bombard with information, but it is the carers who assimilate, digest that information and implement that knowledge and transfer the skills. Then we see the changes in cared for individuals, whatever is the condition, whether it's a geriatric uh, uh, related issues or other conditions. When the changes have occurred, all of us are taking the credit, including myself, but we don't give the credit to the carers. When they fail to comply with the advice we have given, we immediately label carers are the barriers, but we fail to ask the question, why carers are the barrier? Why they are unable to comply with the knowledge, information, and uh, skills you have transformed. Because carers not have so many roles they are playing. They are mother, they are uh, uh, wife. Majority of carers are women again, uh, which I will come to in a minute. So, and also they, they need to find that uh, source of income to feed the families as well. So there are two individuals are losing the income. So many competing priorities are there, but nobody is asking a question to a carer. Just a simple question. How are you? Do you need any help? All the time, we as professionals only focused on care for individuals. So it is important. What I call is this a triangle of care where carer play equal role, critical role for the care for individuals. So burden of caring, this is the uh, research we have done survey. Uh, as I mentioned, majority of caring is done by women. 84% of carers are women. One side, we are providing the support and treatment to the cared for individuals. Other side, carers, as you can see, 79% of carers have shown the signs of minor mental illness, anxiety and depression, where there is no support system for them. Imagine if they were left untreated or unsupported, they would become the users of the health services. Nearly 50% of carers had a physical health problem. And nine out of 10 carers worried about the financial situation because significant uh, decrease in the family income and the increase in health care uh, cost and other costs and no income coming. Two individuals are losing the income. One cared for individual, another carer, unable to go to work. And there is no respite or a short break for carers. Carers are continuously providing the care. Their battery is draining continuously. There is no opportunity for them to recharge the batteries. Last two points are finally, carers are excluded from social cultural activities because of the caring responsibility. Most of the time, carers unable to attend these social cultural events, whether it is ceremonies in the relative's house or uh, friend's place or wedding, 
any of those such situations, they are unable to leave home because they are worried about what is going to happen to the kid for individual. One more point, uh, friends, uh, I would like to share with all of you is there are so many young carers are there. No fault of their own. They are end up caring for grandparents, end up caring for siblings. Due to that, they are dropping out of school. And nobody is thinking about that whole, whatever their dream, aspiration, and uh, like education is completely dashed they're unable to fulfill those dreams. We all have been <clears throat> experiencing and one or the other way we have been impacted by the last year pandemic. And uh, last year we done a survey during this pandemic in India, 72% of uh, uh, carers saw the caring responsibility has increased, significant increase in that. And 55% of carers have reported there is a significant stress and anxiety is there. It has impacted uh, globally. I'm not just uh, sharing only with India, but uh, everywhere. This is the study done in 12 countries. 72% of carers reported reduction in household income. So this pandemic has rightly so thrown a global spotlight on carers. Everybody there is an awareness is there, sensitization is there, the role played by the carers. So can we capitalize on that? Can we create a cadre of carers who continue to provide the quality care, but end of the day, they are also human beings. Their issues and needs need to be identified understood and addressed and supported them strategically. So this is a simple model I have come up with how we can provide the support to uh, family carers uh, in low and middle income settings. This model can be applied to whether it is urban situation or rural situation. Many of the time when I interacted with the carers, they talked about because of caring responsibility, they feel lonely, isolated, unable to attend other social cultural activities. What we have done is we promoted emotional support groups for carers. There are more than 630 carers groups have been promoted in three countries. We meet once in a month. Of course, during this pandemic, we were able to connect virtually like how we have connected the uh, all of you today. Prior to that, it was a physical meeting. These groups were facilitated by a trained facilitator. To address the carers' uh, health issues, we organized a specific health camps, which I will just a uh, uh, second, I will take you through. So this is a simple, flexible, cost-effective, scalable model I have come up with. And initially in 2013, I tried and tested this model with 250 carers in India, in Karnataka, as well as in Andhra Pradesh, two states with uh, high dependency care. And amazing results we were able to see. This was a 18 month uh, pilot project. And based on that uh, study and the result, it has increased now. We are providing the support to nearly 80,000 uh, carers in three countries. So this is a kind of uh, emotional support group. So we have created uh, for men as well as uh, women, as I said, mainly it is women. The whole purpose of this group is to talk about their own challenges, their own difficulties. It is not about the cared for individuals, care about the issues they are facing, the difficulties they are going through. So. You will be delighted to know 92% of carers participate at these meetings. And the second one is to address their specific health camps, uh, uh, health issues. We organized with the primary health care uh, centers. We provided a training to uh, doctors and the frontline health workers, ASHA workers and uh, nurses, everyone. We organized a specific camps, whether it is a mental health camp, general health camp, and uh, 
some of the countries carers are having reproductive health issues so we could organize a specific camps to address their own how we can improve their health and well being and the third one is uh, as i mentioned uh, since they became a carer they never had a chance to take a time off or a break from caring role so we organize a day trip for carers to meet with other carers in similar situation go for a picnic and uh, what we done is we initiated a very innovative community caring centers where two adult carers are caring for children or adults needing that care so during the day time carers can go to the uh, attend social events or you want to go to work or meet with the friends and their care for individuals are taken care by the two adult trained carers in this way carers feel connected supported and uh, it is enabling them to uh, recharge their batteries and they continue to provide the quality care i'm not going to take you through the detail here again we come up with a very simple uh, tools uh, developed how we can augment the family income alongside the caring responsibility how we can enable young carers child carers to continue to Uh, their education what is the alternative caring system we could create within the society or family system uh, so this is the final element of the model um, we have the platform for everyone like uh, rightly so uh, geriatric issues elder issues there is a platform is there and the education women's issue girls issue every one there is a platform is there unfortunately there is no platform for carers so what we done is village level or panchayat level we have those carers groups at block or taluk level we created carers association and we created a district level federation and the state level carers multi stakeholder forums are there that is the structure advocacy structure and last 5 to 6 years we have that day for everybody uh you you call whether it is a nurses day a doctors day or uh, everyone's day you google it there is someone's day we are celebrating unfortunately there is a not a day dedicated for carers the vital role they are play friends our whole health system is depending on them but nobody is thinking about the issues and challenges facing the carers so how we can make the caring visible we have been celebrating carers day last 6 uh, years so october 6th is the day different countries different uh, day they are celebrating but at least that is making not just caring visible but uh, highlighting the challenges issues they are facing so next that is about uh, brief about uh, carers world wide and the journey of uh, uh, carers and uh, how we are able to provide the support to carers through partners and we act as a catalyst so the second part i was going to talk about is uh, aging and uh, uh, carers so as uh, dr ambali has highlighted that carers of elderly uh, challenges and uh, difficulties they are going through so this is a very sobering uh, uh, statistics really makes you feel so um, bad uh, that 35% of carers never felt happy looking after the elderly but we never question why that is the case so this is the report done by health is india this is a national report in uh, 2019 uh, elder abuse in india role of family in care giving so 29% of carers felt the burden of caring for an elder and next two statistics are quite uh, startling when it comes to the caring it is the daughter in law almost uh, uh, 7 out of 10 carers are daughter in law who are providing the not just the physical care but also addressing their 
day to day activities as against the sun when it comes to the financial it is the sons like 6 out of 10 carer sons are providing the financial support and reducing the burden and in india uh, many of the family members felt 78% uh, caregivers felt that there is no policy or measures were adopted by their employers to help them is the burden of caring for providing the support to elders at home so i'm going to share with you by 2030 the global population over 60 is going to be 1.4 billion what i'm trying to paint a picture here is that is equal to the current india population only elderly population over age 60 and above so this tells you that there is going to be significant increase in the need for caregivers as we move forward in the coming decade who also talks about there is going to be 400% increase in the need for care in their long term care uh, report so this is the time all of us need to put together a strategy how we could bring in uh, trained caregivers who could meet the needs of the families meet the needs of the elderly and uh, meets the needs of the carers themselves it is so important and by 2050 this number is going to elderly population number is going to go up to 2.1 billion population uh, earlier i gave 2030 so 2050 2.1 billion will be more than 65 years and day for but there is a huge crisis is there in a care due to increase in life expectancy combined with the changing population structure now more and more nucleus families and the reduction in the extended family if you go back 20 years ago or 30 years ago in south asia or india particularly we had the concept of extended family joint family people used to live together and support each other if someone had a caring role he or she was released from main duty so that they can provide the quality care unfortunately now agriculture is no more a profitable business many people are migrating to the cities children are moving to the cities for good education good employment opportunities there is no support system within the families more and more if you visit the villages people you come across is elderly they themselves need support assistance and help they are sometimes they are burdened with looking after a grandchild who has a special need because they are depending on the children's income and they don't have a choice unfortunately that is the situation so here elder care giving answers our society's critical need what i call is there are eight uh way we could uh, provide the support to elders within the uh, society uh, support one is how we can provide the best quality of uh, elder care by providing the support to the family carers that will improve not only the health and the well-being of carers but improves the quality of care and reducing the hospital uh, visits as well and uh, second aspect is is there a possibility of including a module in the nursing uh, curriculum even the uh, medical curriculum uh, indian medical council so this is a important uh, to we all the time we provide the care for someone but we fail to care for ourselves so it is important to inculcate that self care aspect within our day to day activities to make our health system more sustainable we have to build the capacity of carers it is so important so that uh, they are the one ultimately 
spending most of their time with the care for individuals and elderly in the families. And uh, if they are well and they are able to uh, engage in a productive work, engage in some economic activities and contributing to the uh, treasury or through tax, they will be able to drive this economic growth. So this is a holistic approach we need to uh, look into by providing support to caregivers, what are all the things going to happen. Uh, again, uh, in the introduction, uh, uh, Dr. Patil, uh, Ritija Patil has mentioned that all of us, all of us, one or the other day, we all will become carers. We don't know when, but either we'll be a carer or somebody will be cared for, caring for us during our lifetime. It doesn't discriminate whether you are rich or poor. It doesn't discriminate whether you are scientist or singer. It doesn't discriminate whether you are actor or astronaut. Each one of us will be affected by these two roles. Either we'll be a carer or someone will be caring us during our lifetime. This is uh, the quote from Rosalind Carter, former first lady of the United States. There are four kinds of people in the world. Those who have been already a caregiver, those who are currently providing a care, those who will be caregivers and those who will need a caregiver. Friends, I want to say on this offline or virtual platform, I can guarantee minimum 25 to 30% of this audience currently has the caring role. So it is important to recognize, identify and seek help and support. As I mentioned, all of us will be a carer or somebody will be a carer. I had the privilege and the honor to meet with the former president of India, uh, uh, Dr. Pranav Mukherjee, when uh, I was receiving an international award from him. So during our interaction, he asked me the question, what made you to uh, think about this issue about? Then I narrated my story. And immediately he connected, Anil, you, may, you opened my eyes. I'm also a carer. In fact, he was caring for his wife uh, who had uh, who passed away due to uh, cancer. He said, although I have all the resources, people are there to support, but at the end of the day, I worry about her. I have been a good husband to her. I'm unable to you know, provide the emotional support. We used to share meals together due to my role. I'm unable to do. So he became quite emotional when I started narrating. So what I'm narrating here is it doesn't discriminate whether you are president or prime minister. It affects each one of us. And in 2016, I had the privilege of doing a show with uh, Mr. Amitabh Bachchan, Aaj Ki Raat Hai Jindagi. It was a half an hour show which was broadcasted uh, with BBC World Service and uh, Star Plus uh, in 71 countries. So when I shared about the story of carers and the carers worldwide, immediately he connected about the incident that happened to him in 1980s when he met with an accident. He said, Anil, whole country prayed for my speedy recovery and uh, getting well soon. If the Jai Bhagari wasn't with me, I don't think I would have survived. But I never recognized the critical roles he played. You opened my eyes. He became quite emotional. Uh, you are welcome to watch on YouTube. It is called Aaj Ki Raat Hai Jindagi. And you, you, you can try it for uh, carers. It will come. So we done a two-day shooting with him in uh, Mumbai Film City. So here, that is what I'm trying to say doesn't discriminate. Yes, yes uh, Mr. Bachchan has the resources, but still end of the day, he's also a human being. That is the point I'm trying to say. Carers are also human beings. They are also have the need. We talk about the rights of elderly, but can we also talk about rights of carers? Carers are very proud to be caring for someone whom they love dearly. Can we 
also provide this support to them as well. So just to put you a perspective, in the UK, we have more than six and a half million carers in UK. One in every eight adults are carers in UK. The contribution made by the carers in UK is 134 billion, which is more than the National Health Service budget in UK. Because of that, the UK government has recognized the critical role carers are playing, vital role they are playing. There is a separate carers act is there, carers policies are there, and there is a support system is there. In India, for that matter, we have the statistics about everybody, how many people with mental illness, how many elderly are there, how many people are suffering from dementia, dementia how many people with disabilities are there. We have a population of nearly 1.4 billion population in India currently, and more than 100 million elderly are there. Friends, 52% of elderly populations are living below poverty line. This will be a shocking to you. All those nursing homes, all the uh, not-for-profit organizations, medical hospitals, Nightingale, Portias, everybody put together were able to provide the services to only just over four and a half million. That is the kind of uh, uh, support. And most of the support is only in uh, metropolitan cities. Slowly now the B town and C towns support is uh, coming for geriatric care. Again, earlier I highlighted that the WHO uh, has forecasted by 2030, there is going to be 400% increased in need for carers in low and middle income countries, particularly uh, countries like India uh, in, and South Asia. So what is it we need? So what I call this as a culture of care, there are five critical elements that needs. One is that communication. Please involve and engage carers. Don't engage just the carers in terms of providing the care. As I mentioned, the triangle of care, the communication has to be between all the three uh, stakeholders. Those are the key pillars, improving the health and well-being of carers as well as care for individuals. And there has to be continuity of uh, uh, care has to be there. That same person or same professionals providing the same kind of uh, messages rather than providing different messages and confusions and all those things. And when you are designing a care support and care need, there has to be a coordination between the family members, professionals, and the care for individuals and other service providers as well. And it has to be a holistic approach. And community-centered is much uh, cost-effective and significant uh, improvement takes place rather than the institution setup. I'm not uh, saying that institution setup is not required, but majority of caring can be done within their own environment, within their own home setup. So where people uh, feel uh, familiarity with the area and association with uh, people around him or her, and the quality of care is provided uh, well within that setup, you can see significant increase in health and well-being, and they can become a productive member of the society and the family. So what I call is uh, call for action. So there are four critical areas where we need to be thinking about uh, BLD as an institution. One is you have been fantastically, I'm, I'm delighted to hear that uh, you are the third institution in the country providing these services for elderly, like geriatric. Not only that, but somewhere we need to incorporate a module on caregiving in your nursing training as well as medical training, that education and training. And the third and most important is there has to be interdisciplinary planning as it affects each and every one. So 
this element, although it is fantastic to have a separate uh, department, but is there a possibility of including the issue of errors and the geriatric issues in all other disciplines as well? And respecting the rights of professionals, rights of uh, care for individuals, rights of carers as well. Because end of the day, we all are human beings. We all go through same emotions, same issues, same challenges. How best we respect and uh, recognize and start providing the support. So again, WHO, I'm not going to go into the detail. Uh, so there is a great recognition at the highest level. So they are making a strong uh, statement that there is a long-term care is needed. Now, many of the institutions, many of the global institutions like International Labor Organization, United Nations, all that sustainable development goal you cannot achieve without uh, addressing the issues of carers, without addressing the elderly care. So there is a greater need for investment from the funders, governments, and global institutions and other service providers. So there are four level of uh, uh, care is uh, needing. So uh, one is institution, community and informal care and the self care. As you can see, the investment needed is corresponds to each of that. Institution obviously requires more investment and uh, more uh, cost is required. Whereas community, within the community setup, there are other people who can provide the uh, uh, care and informal carers and self-care is the least. If we all start incorporating 10 minutes during the day, keeping aside for our own self-care, so most of the issues and challenges can be addressed on a day-to-day -day basis, rather than when the situation gone beyond our control. So friends, what I'm saying here is, like our intervention, our support is just like a drop of ink in a bucket full of water. You don't need a whole bottle of ink to change the color, just a little bit of support. Today, Dr. Sharma was appreciating uh, uh, Dr. Ambali about his initiatives and uh, how proud uh, he is. That gives enough uh, uh, inspiration and motivation and wanting to do the more. So these are the kinds of recognition and uh, support is uh, required. It's not, yes, money is required. Money is not the be all and the end all. It's not the answer, but there are beyond money. Money plus is there. What is that plus? Can we recognize? Can we just ask simple question? How are you? Do you need any help? That opens the door. I'm sure you have come across uh, many in your own day-to-day uh, -day practice. Like you may have seen, like in hospital, if one of our relatives is not well, hospitalized, his or her carer will be there means family member will be there. There are many relatives come to see that individual. And there will be 101 question will be asked the person who is lying on the bed. What did doctor say? What the test results say? Can I get you some juice? Can I bring you some coconut, tender coconut or biscuits or whatever it is? And the person lying on the bed says, please leave me alone. I had enough of these questions. But next to that bed, there is someone relative, wife, husband, our parents sitting, we fail to ask a question, how are you? Or do you need any help? Or you can go and get some fresh air. I will look after. We don't ask. The moment you ask friends, I can guarantee 90% of carers, their eyes will be filled with the tears because they are so anxious, so worried. My husband will be in, uh, back at home or not. So it is important to recognize and these are the common sense. I'm not talking something totally new. These are the values we had inbuilt. Unfortunately, we are missing those values as we are progressing. So key points, what is it we need? We need to recognize the vital role carers play 
and change the practice and ask about the health of carers alongside the patient. So this is important for nurses as well as professional doctors. Medical college offer model on carers and carings. I'm so delighted Dr. Ambali has uh, started initiating this conversation. We have had a series of these conversations and carers would be very happy to support on that aspect. It's not just good enough to provide the training and all, but we need to uh, carry out the systematic research on the impact of caring as well. Try to understand, come up with the new solutions, new support mechanism. And we need to inbuild or create a system where encouraging carers to take some time off or a short break. Like you and me, when there is a Saturday, Sundays, we can take time off, we can spend time with friends and families. But unfortunately, carers, many carers, they don't have that choice. That is the word I would like to use. As I mentioned earlier, caring affects everyone. So support for carers to become a mandatory, it's not a optional. So to conclude, friends, these are my learnings. Last uh, seven, eight years or uh, nine years has been to healthcare systems. Carers are the unpaid army keeping everything going. They are invisible. They are hidden behind the curtain. Can we recognize that? Can we appreciate that? To service providers like all of you in the room uh, are virtual on this platform. They are the potential catalyst for therapy success as Dr. Ambali was saying. So can we recognize that? Can we acknowledge that? To doctors, they are the expert by experience turning the treatment plan into reality. Friends, I'm sure you have come across that carers may not know how to read and write. They may not have gone to university, but they do know how to care for their loved one. Can we recognize that? They have that inbuilt skills and uh, uh, expertise. Can we recognize that? And to many elderly, to many patients, they are indispensable. Brothers, mothers, husbands, grandmother, neighbors, that make each day possible. So thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. Uh, as I mentioned that this is just a orientation and sensitization to give you the broad overview about the issues of carers and how carers worldwide is uh, providing the support to carers through partner organization. And then second part was aging and caring, give, given you the global picture and the uh, challenges within that sector. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Anil Patil for your excellent speech and lecture on these carers and how to take care of these carers, how to support carers. In brief, you have given us very good information about carers. So we have got the very good idea about carers. Carers are the people, as we have seen, they are an invisible, uh, invisible army who are serving for the people who are caring for the people. And at the same time, we have understood that they also should be cared properly because they are caring for others. So you have very fantastically explained how they should be cared for and how they should be motivated to come forward. So now with this session, uh, today's, uh, this session is open for question and answers. I request participants to if you have any questions, please ask uh, questions to Dr. Anil Patil, sir. Uh, Dr. Anil, sir. Uh, sir th there are some uh, questions in the chat. Uh, yes, if sir, I please. can take those first, and then uh, uh, if there are any additional questions from the floor or virtually, I'm more than happy to take on. Sure, sir. So please go ahead with the chat questions. Okay. Um, there is a question, uh, like in UK, should carers in India be given allowance from the government if they had to downscale their work and earnings as part of the caring? Uh, this is from Partha Ray. Uh, that's a wonderful question, uh, uh, Partha. 
you will be delighted to know Kerala sold wide at a very early stage. Uh, we were at the right time, right place, able to influence uh, national government to bring about two significant landmark policy change in India. One is Rights of Persons with Disability Act 2016. Another is Mental Health Bill Act 2018, which was passed by both the Houses of Parliament. National government, which frames the policies, it is the state government which implements. Again, um, we were instrumental. Both these two acts recognizes three golden words, support to caregivers in those two acts. So Karnataka government has invited carers worldwide and recognized carers worldwide contribution as a nodal agencies. And we are advising and developing a recommendation and guidelines to provide the support to carers in disabilities, this new disability uh, uh, law, 2016. And last year, one of the recommendations we made was carers should be compensated for their time and they should be provided the allowance. You will be delighted to know the Karnataka government in urban areas, they are providing 6,000 rupees now. So more than uh, uh, 600 carers have accessed uh, first time for the first time uh, in the Karnataka state about that allowance. So that is just a beginning uh, I'm sharing with you. So it's still a long way to go. We need to develop a uh, strategic uh, framework for carers as well as the policy gaps. So we need to understand uh, uh, more about from the carer's point of view. And the second one we have made a recommendation is a part of Manrega. Uh, this is the Employment Guarantee Act. Why don't caregivers be recognized? Because of caring responsibility, they are unable to go to work. If they didn't have the caring responsibility, they would have participated in that. Why can't government recognize caregiving itself is a job, like high dependency care. Why can't they give 100 to 150 days to compensate that? And the third recommendation we have made, we have uh, reviewed the policy, 10 policies. You are welcome to visit our website. Uh, India Health Policy Reviews are there. And the third recommendation we made is um, part of Manrega, there is a provision for daycare center running, looking after the same children, children. Instead of hiring someone, why don't you hire a carer? Along with their own child or their own person, they can look after another one or two children. So you'll be delighted to know last year, more than 400 carers were engaged in these activities in four states, uh, Karnataka, Andhra, Odisha, and Jharkhand. So these are beginning, beginning to happen. I'm not saying that it is still happening all over India, but a sporadic way. And in Karnataka, we have promoted a multi-stakeholder carers forum at the state level. This forum members constitutes of uh, academicians uh, like Nimans uh, uh, participates uh, and government representatives. There is corporate is there and service providers, mental health, disability and elderly uh, sector as well. Uh, so the whole purpose is, is there a possibility of developing a broad framework for the carers strategy? That is one. Second is, can we look at the Karnataka government policies? and review those. What are the low hanging fruits we can make use of? Because it is a issue of, it is a women's issue. It is a livelihood issue. It is health issue, education issue. Already good policies are there. So majority of carers are women. Can we make use of that? And while we are reviewing, we will come up with a, some gaps. We can promote those, come up with new policies for that. And third one is, can we come up with the action plan for carers to provide this support? Sorry, I have taken a little bit longer to explain that. Young carers need to be recognized. They are poorly recognized in the UK and in India. How do we address the needs of young carers? How do we give respite to carers? So very good talk, recognized. Absolutely, this is, uh, uh, um, what we have done is, uh, you will be delighted to know that we are working with more than 300 young carers. Four years ago, all of them were either attending 
one day a week or completely dropped out of school. Very sad part is 97% of young carers are girls. Again, in our South Asian society, we give more importance to boys. Anyway, girl is going to be get married. So this I'm talking in rural areas, unfortunately, that is the situation. Majority of them were either dropped out are unable to continue the education. What we done is through this community caring centers, we have promoted 24 of such centers. During the day, there are two adult carers caring for their loved one, their siblings or parents or grandparents, so that they can continue their education. Before and after school, still they have the responsibility, but during school time, there are these volunteer carers we have trained and they are caring for them. You will be delighted to know all of them were back in full-time school. Unfortunately, this pandemic has impacted everybody. So now we have connected them virtually. So that is one way to, and the second is, I think we need to provide this awareness and sensitization to the education authority as well. There are so many children are missing out of the system. So they need to understand why these children are unable to, what can education system do about it? We need a carers forum, carers conference, carers training, and absolutely agree. Uh, uh, so Ningan Gauda Patil says, uh, sir, in which mode implement the policies effectively? Many times government make policy, but not implement it. And moreover, people don't know about these policies. I totally agree, uh, Dr. Patil. Absolutely, there are fantastic policies are there. Many times we don't know what those policies are all about. So it is important for us to raise those awareness. And that is why we are engaging and creating these forums. We created a carers uh, association through that. It's not good enough what we have done. As I said, it is just a, a little drop. There is a long way to go about it. So thank you, uh, Dr. Ambali. If there are any other questions from the floor, I'll be more than happy to take. Any questions? Any, any questions, please? Share? Sir, uh, this was a very eye opener for all of us. Even I have postgraduate students and the faculty members attending this program. You have brought the insight of how the issues of caregivers and uh, affect the not only the management doctor's role is only to uh, has been limited only to make a diagnosis and put a treatment but uh, as a geriatrician uh, we have uh, analyzed that we have a role to provide counseling for the caregivers too and i have seen many caregivers uh, literally coming and crying in my clinic that how to handle this old man this will become very difficult so it takes a lot of time uh, and to understand what are the issues. Uh, maybe every time they are not right or the, uh, the old man may be yeah. also right on the other side. Uh, we don't, we have to talk to him as, as well. Unless we don't reach the core issue, uh, we cannot uh, find a solution for them. And most of the time solutions are in their own home. So, uh, and sometimes uh, we just, uh, 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 for the benefit of the care, better care, we just shout at the patient that you have such a good team in the family members to provide the care. Why don't you accept that? Though their children are not caring, we just bring that issue in the other way around. And uh, I find that the daughter-in-law feels sometimes bad, that doctor is appreciating, though I'm not caring for my mother-in-law, but he's appreciating. So thereafter, she starts taking care uh, in the better way. So that is what I had tried in my hospital and in patients that uh, go the opposite round and say that you have such a good daughter-in-law, good son to take care. Uh, what is that you are not uh, acknowledging them? So mm -hmm. somewhere it pinches them and they have started providing care in the better way. So uh, there is a lot of things to learn and uh, just putting the treatment and sending them is not sufficient, especially in older care. We get many older people, especially caring for uh, carers of dementia and those are bedridden, uh, where uh, we are mainly concentrating on prevention of uh, aspiration of pneumonia uh, in them and that is how and prevention of bed source so many issues are there and i i I'm, we are very delighted here to uh, look at their insights uh, any questions from the audience still anybody wants to ask 
or put in the chat box or you can come directly and ask you. I think there they, is uh, one question on in the chat box, uh, Dr. Ambali, if I can. Yes, please uh, take it, please take it. Yeah. Um, how to motivate more carers to become dedicated and undergo training? Uh, so I totally echo with Dr. Ambali, uh, like recognizing and uh, appreciating the role played by the carers. That suddenly changes the dynamics and to strengthen that relationship between the care for individuals and carers. What I say is these are the two sides of the same coin. Then only you have the value. What you have done, Ambali, there is you have strengthened that relationship between two and made them aware to recognize each one's role. Each one is critical for one or each other's well-being. So important it is. You are strengthening that further their relationship. That is one. The second is I feel that many of the time uh, this whole caregiving or this sector, carers are low paid. It is not a recognized job. And many times there are agencies are there and they will be able to find a servant or a maid. So they can do home cooking, cleaning and uh, washing and all. But caregiving is a emotional support and additional support that requires a specialist skills. And unfortunately still market is not recognizing and market is not paying the uh, skills they are providing the services to. So somewhere we need to come up with a certification course, which is recognized so that carers can go through this training module and then they can be placed in the home and provide them meeting the needs of the family as well as the uh, carer, like financial support, their family support. In terms of uh, motivation, it is a constant uh, motivation. So as Dr. Ambali has mentioned, we need to ask more questions rather than giving them the advice and all. They have the answer. Sometimes they want to hear from us. Just it is our role is to facilitate that. Our role is to facilitate. They know how to, uh, where the solution is. Sometimes they find it difficult to go there. If we can put two together, connect them, that is the best thing to, and appreciate it. Regular uh, review meeting, like Dr. Ambali mentioned that uh, uh, counseling and all. You'll be delighted to know that we have trained more than 150 carers as barefoot counselors through NIMANS and various universities. They are the first point of contact. There are so many carers initially because of the huge burden of caring uh, role and responsibilities, they were attempting to commit suicide because there was no support system for them. Today, they are the leaders. They are representing the uh, forums at a state level. They are the inspiration. So connecting with the people, making sure that they are not isolated, they are lo not lonely, how you connect with the people and create the carers forum like yes, how you have developed here geriatric forums, why don't you bring it? that way people will get motivated. Exactly. Uh, we are, we uh, along with the nursing college of Sri B.M. Patil Institute of Nursing Sciences, we are looking forward to uh, bring this course uh, uh, for our nurses here and certify them so that uh, they can be a better uh, dedicated for the providing care for the elder patients admitted in our institution. Uh, now uh, we have Dr. Partha Ray who has raised hand. Sir, two minutes for you. Can share some questions or throw insights on that? Uh, I, I want Anand. To ask. Anand. Just a bit, madam. Dr. Partha is talking. Sure. I'll be very quick. Dr. Patel, I must congratulate you for raising a very important issue. One question, looking at it from the other side, these patients who are being cared for are vulnerable individuals. Carers are doing a great job, but there is always a need for regulation to maintain probity because there may be some pecuniary interests into why somebody might be caring for another person. What are the fail check mechanisms built into the training courses? That's one. Secondly, as Professor Ambali already said, there is the problem of carer burnout and abuse and that's seen in many UK care homes 
through covert cameras and that happens everywhere of you know of a physical assault and psychological assault of the patient by the carers so there are other complex issues sorry to raise this but you know we are leaving and the nuclear family that is happening in india where the role of professional carers come in I am so damn bringing up some of the dark sides of the 99% of the good sides but I guess you have a link in England as do I and in India so I have seen both sides of the thing just making sure that the uh, ground rules are put in place so no vulnerable adult or child is put at any risk through family members who are carers or even professional caregivers that was my question i thought i'd bring that to light thank you sir like thank you very much for a very 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 relevant and timely talk which is applicable as well in americas england as well as in india thank you sir uh pratibha madam do you want to share some questions yeah <clears throat> what i wanted to ask uh, uh, dr anil is that uh, if you look at india uh, when we talk about care care burden invariably uh, there's a crossover between caring for disabled children dyslexic children and uh, mentally retarded children and uh, psychiatric uh, young adults uh, but here i want to ask a question uh, is there a policy that is made clearly for caring of elderly Uh, the oldest old and old uh, which are becoming dependent uh, if i see uh, there's only one state which is really following a fantastic module for the elderly that is uh, the kerala kerala state of kerala i don't see such a thing happening um, in any other state um and uh, well, the reason i want want to ask is has the government addressed because it is taken for granted uh, that uh, the family members will care for the other family member uh, which now is becoming a problem so is there a policy we see specially for elderly care thank you madam over to you dr anil sir thank you dr uh, ambali uh, i will take that uh, pratibha's question then i will come to the uh, parthas uh, so you are absolutely right uh, uh, dr pratibha uh, kerala is way way ahead in terms of the policies uh, like kutumb kutumba sri is a fantastic yes. policies and they have the highest number of elderly population in uh, uh, kerala and they are the one first to bring out the state level uh, palliative care policy as well unfortunately uh, at the national level still there is not a recognition uh, by the indian government that uh, uh, still they feel that uh, elderly person is cared by the family members and they have made it a mandatory uh, in the policies so that is the one area we have been working very closely with uh, help as india and the other uh, organizations a similar kind of organization to recognize the role played by the carers uh, could be family members could be friends could be anyone to be recognized not to make it as a mandatory so you know these things take lot of time bring any changes to the policies but we'll get there we'll get there because of this demographic changes in the family structure uh, absolutely now more and more nucleus families and the people who are uh, providing the care sometime is it is the elderly uh, like relatives or uh, friends or other uh, uh, persons uh, in the family not the family members uh, so to answer your question there is no uh policy about the caregivers in the uh, elderly so that is what we'll be working i'm sure you'll be able to join us and help us yes. in terms of making yeah. a very strong case uh yes to advocate on this issue uh yes so to to come to answer uh, uh, dr parthas uh, uh, question absolutely i take all your three points uh, uh very much you are absolutely right uh, uh parth so as dr ambali has mentioned that uh, country like india we need uh, need to develop a system uh, like a need based elder care rather than protocol based 
So it is so important. We cannot meet everybody's uh, need at the institutions. So need to recognize the family has the support and they can provide the uh, good quality care at their own home and the environment. In terms of uh, abuse, yes, it is happening. I'm not uh, saying and denying it is happening uh, everywhere, whether it is in uh, developed countries or developing countries, it is happening. But can we understand why those abuses are taking place? rather than just uh, highlighting why those keep happening and making and painting a picture that uh, I'm not denying that uh, carers are not abusing. There are certain situations are there, uh, but we are only painting the picture from one side of the coin, not other sides of the coin. So it is important to balance uh, both those things and uh, try to uh, put together in spite of having every possible solution you can think about. You cannot uh, create a 100% ideal society. So that is what I'm uh, trying to say. And the third one is, uh, I think more and more institutions are recognizing now there is a need for good quality training and we need to create a cadre of caregivers. who can go out and start providing the uh, services, the family members and the person needing the care. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for those answers. And I now invite uh, Dr. M.B. Biradar, who is a uh, representative of National Program Healthcare Elderly in Bijapur District, uh, to say a few words. Sir, Dr. Biradar, sir, please unmute. Yes, please. Sir. Good evening, everybody. I am extremely happy for organizing this webinar. Little louder, sir. Just a minute. Huh. I am, uh, good evening, everybody. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Huh. Good evening, everybody. First of all, I want to congratulate uh, BAD Medical College and uh, Dr. Anand Amli, sir, and uh, MB Patil, sir. Uh, Arvind Pandit sir, Rajesh Tonnotigi, Vijaywara, Sharan Badiyar sir, for organizing a very uh, meaningful yeah. and very uh, uh, useful for the society so, webinar. We are, uh, we, are uh, we are functioning our uh, NPHC program in all over the, our district at the sub-center level. At, at sub-center level, uh, maintaining a register about 60 years. Why I am telling this, Dr. Anil Patil has came from a long way from UK. Uh, I want to give a strong message from my district. Uh, we are uh, following this uh, uh, from uh, six years, sir. We are uh, taking care of those 60 plus patients for diabetes patient, hypertension, stroke, MI, and uh, impaired hearing and dental tooth like tooth bagya in our government of Karnataka region, free of cost. All the services are free of cost in government of Karnataka at sub-center and PAC, CAC and Taluka level and district level hospital. This is our main objective for the 60 plus years. I am very thankful for the great lecture by the Anit Patil sir. It, uh, which is given to sir, which is going to serve the poor and poorest people in the rural places, and uh, I am very uh, thank you for the Ananamli sir organizing NPAC program webinar. This is the second time, and uh, chairperson Dr. Sri Thomas Principal Nursing College in uh, 2019, he uh, he was he has organized a very good webinar regarding the COVID-19. That time also I am participant of the commissioner of Vijaypur and uh, ADC, assistant deputy commissioner of Vijaypur and district surveillance officer, that is me, Dr. Malanuda B. Birada. He was yes. a good webinar and a very crucial. That's why I am very thankful for Dr. Anandamli, sir, and BLD medical staff 
from mb patel sir to rajesh vanuti sir and vijay varas sir i will thank you very much sir thank you for the kind words and we continue to work with npsc uh, with all our programs as we have been doing for last 5 years uh, thank you very much dr birabar now i uh, request dr shalman chopade sir to give a concluding remarks of this uh, beautiful uh, lecture that has been an insight been shared by dr anil patil sir thank you once again sir thank you dr anil patil sir for your uh i really this was a eye opener for all of us and we have seen that caregivers are very much and vital part of our society and they should be cared for as you have said sir rightly that you, by 2030 our uh, the global population will be 1.4 billion and as the population will be increased along with that the carers the number of carers will be increased by 400% but when this carers number is also increased we have to take care and we have to look forward that how the carers will be given confidence and their confidence has to be boost and they have to be uh, really given uh, support so with this lecture sir you have really opened our eyes and the all the participants they have really helped and they have got the support from your this lecture so once again sir i am very much thankful to you for your uh, eye opening and the, uh, your eye opener this lecture what you have given to us and we as a nursing institution and nursing professionals we have joined our hands along with our uh, precious dr ambli sir and we are working together in collaboration with uh, taking care of geriatric patient and geriatric nursing uh, care uh, that we are organizing we are looking forward for uh, collaborating with your association and your organization also so once again sir thank you very much and all uh, i am also uh, thankful to, for all the participants who have participated for this today's uh, lecture and webinar thank you all thank you very much thank you sir i now request dr santosh bt to propose vote of thanks such a knowledge gain session it was i immensely thank dr anil patel sir for such a eye opening lecture regarding care giving and the variable aspects of carers and how to change the view and implement those for the better society thank you so much sir it was our honor to have you among us so i also thank professor shalman s chopde sir for governing and taking the whole program towards a perfect finish thank you so much sir so i also thank honorable vice chancellor registrar dean faculty of medicine dean faculty of allied health science and vice principal i also thank the program partners association of physician of india karnataka chapter nphc and medical superintendent and vice president geriatric society of india and geriatric clinic i also thank all the coordinators and all the participants for their peaceful cooperation i thank you and i also thank dr sneha mukherjee dr rutuja patil and dr victoria jacob i thank you one and all thank you sir thank you thank you so much uh, dr ambali uh, really it was uh, wonderful and uh, let us join hands together and continue uh, our journey together not just to make caring visible but uh, recognize the universal role they are playing critical role they are playing and uh, let us uh, work together to provide them universal support Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you very much, sir.